All right, here's our review for test unit 2.2. Uh, number one is asking us a part of a linear function is shown on the grid. Uh, what is the domain of the part of the linear function shown? And we're going to fill in blanks. On your uh, BEUA unit 2.2 test um, on the Chromebooks, it's going to have a drop down menu here. So make sure you're able to select it by clicking on the drop down menu. But for the review, you're going to write it in here. It says the domain is the set of all real numbers. Now you'll remember that when we do this, we always start off with all real numbers, like from our nodes, and then we always start off with greater than. So your options are either greater than, greater than or equal, less than, less than or equal. So these are your four options over here. Uh, so let's look at, since it's domain, on the left, how far to the left does this go? Right here, it's a closed circle at negative 2. So remember, a closed circle is going to include the, uh, the value. It's going to be inclusive. So we always start off with greater than, but since it's a shaded endpoint, it's greater than or equal to and then that value on the left since domain is from left to right is negative 2 and then where it says and and now we're gonna look at the very right of this segment the x value is not negative 5. That is a common error. I know there's a negative 5 next to it, but that is on the y axis. So we need to look at the x axis. It's at 1, so we're going to put less than because that's the greatest value. So x can be anywhere less than. And since it's an open circle, it's not inclusive. It's just going to be less than 1. All right, number two, Billy is going to a school band concert. The entry fee for the concert is $5, uh, and the fun size candy costs 75 cents each. The equation, y equals 75, sorry, 0 0.75x plus 5 shows the relationship between x, the number of candy bars Billy will eat, and y, the total amount he will spend. So which set represents the underline it range of the situation? if Billy eats no more than five fun-sized candy bars. So uh, it's okay if we find the domain. In fact, we need to. But notice we are finding range for this answer. So it tells us that he's going to eat no more than five, which means five is the maximum he'll eat. It includes five. He could also obviously eat zero, and it is a discrete function because he is not eating any decimal candy bars. So our domain is going to be all of those whole numbers from the least to greatest of candy bars. So put a bracket, and you write this off to the side. You got zero. He could eat none. He could eat one, two, three, and like we said, all the way up to... Five, just no more than five. Now I want you to notice uh, B is a distractor. I'm going to cross that one out uh, because what I just wrote down is domain, and we are not looking for domain. We are looking for range. So we need to input or substitute these domain x values into our linear equation. So we get the y, the range, we're going to start evaluating. So start with the first value of 0. So y equals 0 0.75 times 0. Five. Now remember, you could use Desmos to type in that uh, relation on the right to evaluate it. Uh, but 0 times anything is 0. Adding 5 gives you 5. So we, are, we can already see that our range should involve the number 5. And just by a cursory glance, the only answer choice that includes 5 is letter A. Okay. Um, but real quick, we're 
we're plugging in all these values all the way up to uh, all the way up to five. My pen is acting up. So when we plug in one, we get 5.75, and it goes on and it goes on. So our range is 5, 5.75, and it goes on and on. You can tell the answer is A. Okay. So you're starting to plug in those input X values. You get your output Y values. That is your range. All right. Number three, the domain and range of part of a linear function are given. Now look, this says X is less than five. So if it's if the X value is left and right and it's less than five, then it's going to the left from five. Okay. Then it says y is less than 2. So for the y axis, less than is going down somewhere at 2. So whatever graph we have should be going left from 5 on the x axis, down from 2 on the y axis. So basically down and left. Can't be A, can't be B, can't be D. But look at C. C is going down from 2 on the y-axis. And then it is going left from 5 on the x-axis. It is C. You've got to look at the symbols. Is it less than or greater than? Which direction does that go? Okay. Number four. The table shows the amount of deer food and cups remaining in an automatic feeder as a function of the number of meals the feeder has dispensed. So here's our table. So based on the table, which statement describes the rate of change of the amount of food remaining with respect to the amount of meals dispensed. So remember, when you have a table, we do the bird beaks on the side. Bird beaks on the side. Okay, it's the change in y. over the change in x. So the change in y, you do bottom minus the top. Don't, don't forget. Bottom minus the top. Okay. So 30 minus 42 on top over and then bottom minus top on the x 5 minus 3 30 minus 42 on top 5 minus 3 on the bottom we ended up getting negative 6 so you can just plug that right into desmos to get the answer we got negative 6 as our rate of change Remember, the rate of change means slope. My apologies for my pen. Okay. So, again, it was negative 6. So, none of these say negative 6, but I do see a positive 6, and it says decreasing. That means negative 6. So, that is what it is. Cool. Number 5. 
the graph shows the remaining percentage of the workout as a linear function of time. So find the rate of change of the function of the percent remaining with respect to time. Now we can do this, but remember, what does rate of change mean? Slope. And then how do I find slope? Rise over run. And remember, rise over run is from left to right. So I'm going to pick a point on the left, two points that are on the grid. I'm going to rise over run. Now look, this goes down from 100 down to 90. That is minus 10. And then it runs over what looks like 1. But you got to look at the down here. It runs 5. So it's negative 10 over 5. Negative 10 divided by 5. Desmos will tell you is negative 2. Okay? So the answer has to be C. Do you see how D is a distractor? Because um, it's missing the negative sign. OK, let's try the next one. Number six, what's the rate of change? Once again, do you know rate of change means slope? And slope means M. Well, when it's sideways, you, again, change in Y over change in X. So 64.8 on the right minus 74 on the left. And then negative 13 on the right minus negative 15 on the left. Okay. So once again, I'm going to take these numbers, plug them in Desmos. So let's do this. Hit divide first so you can get your fraction bar. 64.8 minus 74. Go to the bottom. Negative 15 minus negative 15. Gives me negative 4.6. Now, are these answers? Well, it's a fill in the blank. So negative 4.6 is great for that answer. Cool. All right. Desmos is your friend. You just got to know it's change in Y over change in X. You have to subtract in the same order. Number seven, graph a linear function. Okay, what is the X and the Y intercept? So the X intercept right here, that is two comma zero. It's here's zero, zero, goes to the right two. That's the X value. The Y value is zero. Down here is the Y intercept. Now the x value is 0, and the y value goes down 8, so that is negative 8, not positive 8. So again, it's 2, comma 0, 0, negative 8. That is going to give us letter C. Cool. Number 9. 8, sorry, my, my bad. Number 8. Myra lit a candle. The height in inches of the candle can be found using the equation y equals negative 0.5x plus 5, where x represents the number of hours the candle has been burning. How long did it take the candle to reach a height of 0 inches? All right, so here's the deal. Height of 0, okay, x is not height, right? x is hours, so I'm going to plug in 0 for the y value. Cool. Very important. Zero is going to be plugged into y. Zero equals neg neg negative 0.5x plus 5. Okay. Now, if I'm solving for x, first I'm going to get rid of this loner minus uh, plus 5 by subtracting 5. And I would get 
zero minus five is negative five equals neg negative zero point five zero x, and that's the coefficient. To get rid of any coefficient, we have to divide. So we divide by negative zero point five zero. Divide by negative zero point five zero. So what is negative five divided by negative zero point five zero? We get ten. So these cancel. So ten equals x. And that is going to be our answer. All right, number nine. The graph is shown. What is the slope of the function? Now, you could take those two points and do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Slope formula. Or you could pick two points on the grid, just count the rise over run. Now, if I just looking at this, counting rise over run is up three over two for grid points. But the reason why this one's tricky is because it's not on the grid. It's like halfway between, right? Look, I'm going to show you the slope formula way. Y2, 1.5, minus Y1, negative three. Over x2 minus x1 in the same order, negative 1 minus negative 4. All right, so let's plug it in. 1.5, oops, divide first. 1.5 minus negative 3, and then go down, negative 1 minus negative 4. Gives me 1.5. Don't forget this fraction bu button right here. Turn it back into a fraction, and I get 3 over 2. Isn't that what we would have gotten if we counted up 3 over 2 to get this point right here, right? So we get B. Last one. Remember the cover-up method? that we learned in class. If I plug in x equals zero, the y vanishes. So now I just have, sorry, if I plug in x equals zero, the x vanishes. And now I just have negative three y equals 12. And then what do I got? What do I got? it? What do I got to do to get rid of that negative 3? I got to divide by negative 3. And I get y equals negative 4. So on the y axis, I'm going to put a negative 4 there. Now, the next thing I got to do is y has to equal 0. So if y equals 0, that's gone. Now I just have 2x equals 12. And then divide by 2. 12 divided by 2 equals 6. That means on the x-axis. Kind of put 6. So 6 goes here, positive, make sure that you graph this straight as you can using a straight edge. You can use the protractor or ruler. And that's your review. Make sure you're ready for this test. Okay. Just like the review. Very similar in style and problems. All about slope, rate of change. Uh, there's some domain and range still. Uh, just be careful. Uh, study this closely. 
and be ready for your test on Friday.